day viewers and fellow YouTubers. People all par here. Today I did a little rail filming in Kennesaw, Georgia. Didn't see any trains. So today I'm just going to take the opportunity to share one of my stories with you. Show you around a, a little depot in Kennesaw, Georgia. And, um, and even though I didn't catch a train, I had a pretty good time out there looking at something different. We saw the grandbaby today and uh, all in all I had a pleasant day. Alright, I'm up upstairs at a Burger Fi in Kennesaw, Georgia. I thought I might get a chance to catch a train with this GoPro, which I'm having to hand hold. I don't have my hand here to put it on. Or a tripod. Oh, we needed a train before I leave. I already ate my burger. My place we were at. We've crossed over the tracks and came over here to this little train station in Kennesaw, Georgia. What does it say on the sign? The depot. I've been doing a lot of walking out here today more than I'm used to. So the title of today's walking, today's video is walking. Walking at the Kennesaw Depot. All we need is a train. Grandbaby's over there playing in the playground. Don't think I'm going to see a train, but you never know. Today I want to tell you a story or at least share some walking memories from my life. I'm currently a 71-year-old man and often find it difficult to do any great amount of walking. I usually carry a walking stick, uh, a walk to the mailbox and back can make me tired, and a trip to the store to shop requires my walking cane, and when in a big place like Walmart or a grocery store, I couldn't get around much at all without one of them battery-powered carts. This was not always the case. I have accumulated some memories, one is not likely to forget when trouble arose while walking. From the age of four or five until I was around eight or nine, I was walking around quite unsupervised on the dirt roads of a rural sawmill community in Telfair County, McCree, Georgia nearly always was barefoot. I recall playing in the muddy ditches with my two brothers. We indulged in such fun activities as digging up crawdads or just wading in the mud so we could squish mud up between our toes or going snake hunting. I have shared some of my more memorable snake stories with my viewers before. It didn't always end well. We would walk in the woods for hours, run up and down the dirt roads, playing with such exciting toys as putting a wire through an old oil filter and rolling it down the road, or a barrel hoop, or an old car tire. Let's not forget shooting homemade slingshots and playing with all the local dogs in the community. When we lived there, we had to ride a school bus to get to school. Those days didn't last because we had to leave our peaceful but poor existence in Georgia and go live with our father and stepmother in sunny Brevard County, O'Galley, Florida. There we dressed more like city kids and they made us wear shoes, something quite advisable in Florida. Down there they got the dreaded creeping eruption and sand spurs. Believe me, you don't ever want to get itchy, creeping eruption. You had to go to the doctor and get that stuff froze to cure it. If you don't believe me there's such a thing, just Google it. Here's what Google says about it. Creeping eruption is a skin infection caused by hookworms. The, invest the infection is also called cutaneous larva migraines or sandworm disease. Creeping eruption causes severe itching, blistering, red growing, winding rash. 
The infection usually appears on areas of the body that have been exposed to contaminated ground. And more than once, I got caught in a sense spur ridden areas, results in large doses of pain. Believe me, you don't ever want to deal with sense spurs. But I digress. I was talking about walking. In Florida, we had to walk to school, with the exception of three years in junior high school when it was too far away and I had to ride the bus. I had to walk over two miles to get to elementary school and just going and coming from school was often an adventure. We often varied our routes to go and come. I recall one damp morning walking down a street somewhat wooded with palmetto bushes. I detected something moving in the bushes. I and my curious nature just had to investigate. I pulled back the palm branches only to be confronted with a large, irritated polecat, a.k.a. a skunk. My brother, hearing my screams, came to see what was the matter, but he couldn't get too close to me as I suddenly possessed a very undesirable odor about my person. <clears throat> In polite terms, I stunk. He went on to school and I went home. Never having had to deal with this problem before, I didn't know what to do. My parents were both at work, took several baths, scrubbed my skin about raw, threw my clothes out in the trash can. Now that I think back about it, I'm sure the garbage man really appreciated my contribution to his collection. Later, my stepmother had me wash with ketchup and it helped to cut the smell. Then it's just a matter of washing off the ketchup. The smell was in my room for weeks. Sometimes a walking occurrence can turn into a running experience. Times when, when your life is in danger and your only option is to tuck tail, run, hit the road, make it a mad dash, scram, Sam. Once I was walking home from elementary school and I deduced that I could save considerable time and conserve my energy by taking a shortcut across a large property that had a four foot chain link fence around it. I easily hopped over it and started across the area to reach the other side. When I got about 100 feet into the property with a little more than 100 feet to go to get out of it, I looked to my left to see two very large angry looking Doberman pinchers come in my direction post haste. I showed them my backside as I dashed for and cleared the fence with them snapping at my heels. You might deduce I never took that shortcut again. On Sundays we attended St. John's Episcopal Church on Young Street. We were acolytes so we had to be there. On one particular Sunday we were walking together on Young Street in the direction of U.S. Highway 1 for no particular reason other than just the usual competitive nature among us. We were throwing oranges. We snitched them off the local trees in the area. My brother tossed one and I said, I can throw further than that and I promptly gave one a heave in the direction of U.S. 1. The orange went farther than I expected, sailed all the way to into the middle of US-1 and disintegrated on the windshield of a passing car. The driver seemed unusually perturbed and screeched his brakes, spun the car around and headed down Young Street directly at us. I deduced he wasn't too happy about it and that reasoning him with him would be futile. So we ran, and ran some more, at least a mile through the orange grove in a zigzag pattern, so he was less likely to catch us when we emerged on the next block. All the while, we could hear him squealing tires around the streets, and for weeks after that, we took a different route to church. There was a time when I was chased out of a pasture by a bull and another time a mother cow came after me for getting too near her calf. 
She acted madder than that bull. You guessed it, I ran. Once while walking, I had to climb a tree to escape a wild boar. It should be noted here, in case it ever happens to you, find a tree. You cannot outrun a wild boar. I once tripped over a large alligator and had to run. I hear tell if you're walking and are chased by a bear, it's best to have someone along with you, because you can't outrun a bear either, but you may be able to outrun the individual you're walking with. I share this tidbit as well. When you get my age, the running days are over. That's the main reason some old men carry a walking stick, so he can use it as a weapon. Mentioning that reminds me I was watching the news the other day. Some young hoodlum somewhere around here tried to attack and beat up a 75-year-old man who was walking. It just happened the old man was a retired boxer, and he promptly beat the hell out of the hoodlum. He had to be hospitalized. I once had to run from a mad Puerto Rican with a large machete. Walking can result in trouble, so my advice is tote a stick or wear your running shoes. Never throw oranges. Never ever climb inside a chain link fenced area. Might not be a bad idea to keep an eye out for alligators, mad dogs, and skunks. But I hope you enjoyed listening to me. This is Pete Walpar saying thanks for stopping by.